Hey, I hope your day's going great. I don't know where we got away from working with Mother Nature. As I drive through my community that I live in, I see all these, these paper bags that are meant to put leaves and sticks and all kinds of yard waste in. And I'm assuming that they're, they're picked up by the town and taken somewhere, hopefully. Hopefully, they're turned into mulch and compost. I don't know if that's the case or not, though. For all I know, they're dumped somewhere. However, almost every lot in our development or our community that we live in backs up to the woods in which you can take your leaves, you can blow them with a leaf blower, a rake, and just put them in the woods. They will decompose. If you want to see an ecosystem that is thriving, go check out the woods. When you walk out into the woods, you have trees growing uh, every year in spring, ferns pop up, uh, the understory starts sprouting, and it thrives every year. If you want to see an ecosystem that's always thriving, go to the woods. If you go to the woods, what happens every year? Leaves fall off the trees, the leaves compost themselves down into the ground. The roots from the trees thrive off of all the nutrients of those leaves. New um, trees sprout from the seeds that may have fallen from all the brushes and trees and all that. Everything thrives because it's a natural ecosystem in which, you know, it's it's a the circle of life. You can look at it as just the circle of life. Uh, animals de die and decompose. The you know all that stuff happens for a reason. Now in our society, for some reason, we've gotten to the point where we are working against mother nature. We're no longer working for mother nature. We, we, we tend to do things that create other things for us to do, which creates other things for us to do. And before you know it, there's a chain reaction of things that we have to do in order to um, make up or get back to how we do it in mother nature. It's almost like telling a lie, and then you have to tell a lie to get out of that lie, and then tell a lie to get out of that lie. And then before you know it, you're telling something that's completely so crazy that everyone knows that it's a lie. Mulch your leaves into your grass. All right, it's been enough complaining. Now that I talked about the leaves and all the stuff in the neighborhood, let's get to woodworking. Let's get some actual work done. So I was gifted a lot of uh, really cool tobacco sticks from Brian Durst from Little House on the island. And uh, what I've been doing with them is um, hand carving them and um, creating really cool bottle openers with them. I ordered uh, a bunch of stainless steel bottle openers that weren't actually, weren't really cheap. But what's really cool about um, what's really cool about these is the wood is really easy to work with and it's really hard so it doesn't splinter it doesn't you know it's not rotten it's really it's aged really well so I've been making really cool as you can see I kind of just use my knife to take a little bit of it off to round the corners off This is some of the, to me, the most fun stuff that I do. I love, love, love carving with my hands and a knife. It's really fun. Kind of leave this one like this, I think. So now what I do is I then take the drill and I drill down a nice hole in the middle.
and we have these. These are pretty awesome. These were actually not cheap. These were a little bit more than $3 each. And um, you can definitely tell that they're high quality. They're not gonna break. They're not some kind of um, thro thro thrown together, together um, alloy or, or something that's not that strong. It is, um, they are stainless steel. And you can just tell by the weight and how strong they are, the quality. But once you get it threaded inside, And just pull it all in. I'm not going to do this one because I still need to stain it. So I'm going to show you what they end up looking like. So here's a bunch that I've already done. This one I carved all the way around, hand carved. This one I kind of rounded off the edges. This one was hand carved and then this one was actually the hardest one to do. I did a little notch for your like hand to go there. Um, so, you know, cool thing about these, each one is different. No, no two are alike, which is awesome. So follow along guys. I'm going to get busy working on these and you guys can follow along. My forearms might get a little bit tired while I'm doing this. So I might end up moving on to doing, um, more soap dishes, but you guys can follow along. This is uh, woodworking right now. It is you know, making and creating is is where I'm the happiest. If I could sit out here all day and do this, and um, you know, as a wor as a work, I would be extremely happy. Um, I don't know what what it is. I feel like if I would have. Um, really thought about it while I was younger and thought about the things that I really wanted to do in life as far as a profession, I have a feeling that it would have been in construction or building or something. Um, but then I wouldn't be where I am today. So that's proof that everything happens for a reason. So this one's pretty, pretty much ready. I'm gonna stain it and I'll show you what I do uh, in a minute, I'm gonna get a couple more done before I start staining so we have a good amount to stain first. These are really cool, the bottom. This is the actual, the stake part of the tobacco stick that they would use to start pushing it through. Really cool stuff, man. I'm, I'm so glad that um, Brian shared these with me because um, they're just, they got history to them, you know, the history from Southern Maryland as a tobacco, you know, tobacco area. That's what they, how they made their money was tobacco and using these, I know tobacco steaks to some people are a dime a dozen and they don't really mean much to anybody, but I'm going to tell you, as far as woodworking goes, they still smell like tobacco. They have that smell to them, and it just reminds me of my youth because I grew up around here, and uh, you know, during the summer you just went by a tobacco barn, and it just smelled just like tobacco curing, drying tobacco. So this is um pretty awesome right here. I love the way we can carve this from with these. Now these these knives right here, um, I'm sure they weren't too expensive, but they're wood carving knives because so they're really sharp. If I was to have a misstep here. Um, <laughs> take a nice hunk of skin off. So I'm trying to be really careful also. Round this off a little bit more. Just try to give each one a little bit of a unique look. Man, these bottom parts are really tough right here. Wood is really hard. And it's, um, you know, as wood dries and cures and ages, it gets harder and harder. It's dense. I like the way that looks. I'm gonna keep it just like this. A little bit rounded up at the top. 
for where the um, the opener is going to screw in and the bottom kept much of its appeal. I could probably sand it a little bit and make it look a little different. Get some of that outer wear off of it. There we go. I like that. It looks good. So remember, I still need to. So that one, I am going to drill the hole right now. I'll drill the hole through here and try to make it as parallel as possible. Okay, so that's ready. This one's ready. You can see the different woods. Could be the different age too. So these came from tobacco sticks that were from a farm, I think, in Mechanicsville, Brian told me. From if I remember correctly. So this one is pretty much a um, you know, it's a it's a it's a square. So, so some of them are like rectangular prisms. This is a square. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna round this one off all the way. I think it's fun to do. Takes a little bit more time, but they look pretty cool when you round them off. Um, when, we're, when I'm making wood pieces, one of the hardest things, and most probably woodworkers will tell you this, one of the hardest things to think about and to do is to price these. So when I price my wood pieces, I don't necessarily think um, much. I think of really kind of one factor. Well, I think about how much time goes into it. That's one thing. Um, the price of the wood doesn't really matter whether it's free or whether I had to buy it. I, I, I really haven't purchased any wood. That's not a big thing. Um, however, one of the biggest things that I think about is how much, if, if I saw that item 
at a store or in a shop, what would I pay for it? And then that's usually what, um, that's my, my number one thing is what would I pay for it? And then I usually price it around that. I'm pricing all of these openers at $10. And I'm doing that um, because the actual stainless steel openers themselves, so this part right here, costs a pretty good amount of money. It costs about $350 each, stainless steel. So that's, that's, you know, just that alone is worth a good amount of money. So you look at it like that, you look at my time and all the stuff, the time I'm putting into it, um, materials like sandpaper and, and um, the oil that I, that I use. I use either tongue oil or linseed oil. That's really not even really a factor in the price. But, you know, a little bit of time that goes into this and the fact that you're getting a unique product that nobody else has. Uh, the one thing I see around here, and I can talk about it because it's, um, I've talked, I always talk to them about it, but a lot of other woodworkers around here, they, they come up with the most beautiful pieces and I feel like they're undercutting themselves. They're, they're not charging enough because that's what I always think about it. when I'm going to buy a cutting board or a wooden spoon from Brian at, at um, Little House on the Island. I, I literally, I tell him every time he should be charging more because he's got to think about how much time he puts into it, the fact that it's a unique piece and that really what he's doing is he's creating art and he has to know that, you know? And I know, um, you know, he's such an amazing guy, um, really nice and, you know, but, you know, there's a point in time where you need to understand that your work, uh, your woodworking is worth a lot. It really is. Uh, and people will pay for it and you're not ripping anybody off. If somebody doesn't want to buy it, they're not going to buy it. I just worked at a market um, at a ch local church the other day, and I'm start working on this one. And there was a guy there that had beautiful pieces. I'm talking, he had pieces that looked like he spent days doing. And you know, like, and he used some kind of saw called a. Hold on, I can I have it in my wallet. And I've seen him before, he used a scroll saw. And what a scroll saw does, it's really cool, it can do really intricate. It's almost like a, um, a jigsaw or a band saw, but it's, it's got a, the blade is thin and it can do really intricate cuts. And um, he was using, a, he used a scroll saw for all these amazing pieces. And um, he was an older guy, and he'd been doing it for a long time. But I'm telling you, these pieces look like it, it took him like some of them look like they might've been eight hours to, to create. And he was selling for 10 or $15. And I'm thinking to myself, my gosh. And, but the problem was, is he wasn't selling any of them. You know, at some point in time, I had this conversation with Janine at some point in time, there, there's like, if, if I'm going to buy something and somebody doesn't respect their own work enough to price it right, then I'm not, I, I have a hard time respecting it. It, it. It's weird to say that, but it's um, like, man, if, if you're putting eight hours into a piece of wood, that should be a couple hundred dollars. I mean, you're, you gotta think about your time. You know, you, you, get, you put that much time into something and you know, that much creativity, it should be, um, you know, it should be worth your while. You should, you should have confidence in yourself and like your work enough to be able to price it accordingly. That's my opinion. Um, I know, I mean, obviously we're doing this for a living now, but man, this is fun to me. I love doing this stuff. And I, and I look at these and I think to myself, if I was at a shop somewhere, if I was on vacation at a shop or if I was going somewhere Christmas shopping and I saw one of these and it was one of a kind, it was made from a tobacco stick a nice bottle opener you can hang up somewhere. If I saw this, I would easily pay $10 for this. Easily. 
Some people might say, well, you should charge five. Well, if I charged five for this, that means each one of these, um, it's not even worth buying these because it's 350 for that. That means I'm making not even a dollar fifty. I'm probably making about a dollar on each one of these. And so where did my work go into that? My creativity and my work. You, I mean, that's one thing I, I learned from my mom is, is as an artist, you have to you have to price your art. This is not just, I mean, to me, I don't look at this as just, I'm just each piece, I'm just carving and not and mindlessly doing. I look at it as a piece of art and everyone's different. Each one's different. And it's, man, this is, um, this wood's really working good here. And this is right here is probably the most dangerous kind of cut I do. Um, but as you can see, my thumb is shielded. So I, I pull, I, I, I pull towards me, but then I pull up pull towards me and I pull up. My thumb is shielded by the wood. So I'm really controlling this cut. I'm not being, uh, I'm not as um, frivolous or as carefree as I am with the other cut that I'm doing when I'm carving the side. I'm actually being really careful with this cut. I'm gonna get these at these corners just run metal a little bit. See how I'm kind of just going for it. This cut because I'm going away from my body. There we go. Nice. It looks good. I'm gonna sand the top. Oops, wrong side.
right guys, I hope you enjoyed the little video. I just wanted to put up a little bit of a video of uh, a little bit less of me talking and a little bit more of me doing a little bit of woodwork uh, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. All right, please make sure that you subscribe, uh, comment if you would like to. I'm sure there's things I'm doing wrong that some people might wanna tell me I'm doing wrong. Not a big deal to me. Um, but uh, just throwing some ideas out there and, and showing you guys what we're doing. So um, I'll see you guys soon, later. Thank you.